Hi, John here. Today we're going to look at an onload tap changer. What you can see in front of you now is a typical onload tap changer. It will be installed in a liquid immersed transformer. Typically the insulating liquid is mineral oil and it will have either its own compartment in which it will sit within mineral oil or it will sit in the main tank of the transformer with the transformer core and windings. Now, as we can see, we've also got some wiring connections here. That's the connections connecting to each of the secondary windings. And these are connections for each phase. If I spin around here, there would be a phase here, another one there, and another one connecting to these cables in the center of the screen there. So that's three separate phases and they're all on the secondary side of the transformer. And we're gonna use the tap changer for regulating the number of turns on the secondary windings. Now, for those of you who are aware, turns ratio on a transformer is also associated with voltage ratio. And what I mean here is the amount of a conductor that is within a magnetic field or a change in magnetic field will dictate the amount of voltage that is induced within that conductor. So in other words, if we've got a secondary winding with 10 turns, less voltage will be induced than if we had a secondary winding with 20 turns. So the number of turns within the change of magnetic field dictates the amount of conductor within the change of magnetic field, and this ultimately dictates the amount of voltage that is induced within the conductor. So we will use the tap changer for changing the number of turns on the secondary winding and thus changing the output voltage. That's all the tap changer's doing. Because the tap changer is an onload tap changer, doing this is not particularly easy. Changing the number of turns on a secondary winding when you're operating at 110,000 volts or potentially more is actually quite difficult. So we need to be able to do this when the transformer is online and that means we need to break and close the circuit without interrupting it or causing it to trip. There are two main designs today employed for onload tap changes and they are resistive and reactive types. The largest problem that you're going to have with a tap changer like this is simply that when it changes position and opens or closes a circuit, this spark or the arc as we call it, is going to gradually wear away the metal contacts. This is the equivalent of switching on and off a light switch, but doing it at 110,000 volts or higher. And whereas you can switch a light switch on and on, and you can do this for a very long period of time, and the contacts are probably not gonna wear away, that is because the spark or the arc has very little energy. Whereas on a tap changer, there is a lot of energy. So these contacts where you open and close them to change the number of turns on the windings, they have to be very strong. Typically, when you're looking at a tap changer, the thing that you need to pay attention to is the number of taps. The number of taps are typically used to indicate when the unit should be maintained. And a typical number like 70,000 taps would indicate that it's time to take the tap changer out and service it. If you do go to this model, you can check out the wiring configuration of this tap changer, and that is at the top on your screen now.